Hello there and welcome to another episode of uh, Marmar Plays Games where today I am going to be playing one of my favorite childhood uh, games of Star Wars. Uh, it's one I played a lot because I didn't have too many Game Boy Advance games. So of course I'm talking about Star Wars Flight of the Falcon. Now this is uh, just like Super Star Wars. A game where you kind of play through the events of the original trilogy. Uh, well, not really, because uh, this time instead of... Uh, I believe it's the whole cast, it's just Han Solo. And as you may hear, it's more... more midis. As the Galactic Empire threatens to wipe away the last remnants of the Republic, the galaxy stands poisoned on the origin. Resistance to the Empire's tyranny and oppression has spread, culminating in the formation of the Rebel Alliance. However, the Empire is in the final stages of preparation to crush the rebellion. The growing storm of events threatens to engulf the galaxy, including a Corellian small smuggler piloting the Millennium Falcon en route to Tatooine at the behest of Crime Lord Jabba the Hutt. Yes. So this is kind of a prequel to, of course, episode 4 right now, because, well, we are playing as Han Solo going towards, um, of course, um, Tatooine before meeting with Obi-Wan and so on. Uh, look, look at these amazing graphics. This is pure... Oh look, it's the CR90, the Time Type 4. Oh, and oh my god. It's Imperial 1 Star Destroyer in all of its pixelated glory. These are graphics, guys. Forget Fallen Order. This, this is a real game. And of course we are fighting Thais. It's a bit difficult to aim in this game. Mostly because of, uh, well, the graphics and the controls are a bit um, floaty. And of course, we are killing uh, Imperial TIE Fighters as. Uh, well, this is an on-rail shooter, kind of. I'll hear those amazing... I'll hear that amazing Imperial March. Ah, uh, it's a shame we don't have the turret. Because, you know, these ties with... Uh, with our turret would be no match against these the uh, amazing YT-300 and of course as the game progresses and I uh, I find my, myself remembering more of the controls uh, I become more efficient at killing these Imperials oh look it's a shuttle Oh, we are losing some health. Ah, uh, guess what's the, going to be the final boss of this mission? You guys can't even imagine what's going to be the boss. Oh look, another Imperial Shuttle. We actually took like three three damage. Ah the shuttle escaped. Okay oh no we couldn't. 
Uh, this is amazing, isn't it, guys? It's it's just like the movies. This is even better than Rogue Squadron. We are just destroying these Imperial ties. Forget about the X-wing or Rogue Squadron. This is this is the real this is the real deal. And of course, we are going to be fighting the amazing Imperial One Star Destroyer. We are taking away all of its weaponry. And we are escaping. Now this is almost the end of the level. Now in this is this is like uh, Super Star Wars is a game I actually have played quite a bit, uh, considering it was one of the only games I had for the Game Boy. So it's no surprise I'm taking things pretty handedly, and of course we fly through hyperspace somehow despite already being at Tatooine and our accuracy was only 16% but that's mostly because I was getting used to the controls now we are trying to evade uh, the Empire now and we are at the most most Eisley I believe no yes yes it's most Eisley most most Espa was the one on uh, fucking Mos Eisley was the one on episode 4, while Mos Espa is the one uh, on the Mandalorian, and uh, and episode uh, 3. Now this this level is actually a bit harder because uh, I you don't know your, your fucking hitbox. And of course, the enemy does. And the developers did, that's why this level is harder, because you don't know uh, where, how to turn and where to turn exactly. But uh, we just have to escape from uh, Moss Espa. We don't have to kill any Imperials this time, we just have to escape. Uh, which is actually a bit harder because, uh, well, look, 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 just imagine trying to evade all of these buildings that are randomly placed. Like, how did I even do that? That's, that's just nuts. We, we are taking some damage, but it's not the end of the world. Considering this is more of a race. But you know, this is what they don't show you on uh, on the movies. The struggle uh, Luke and the company had to go through just to escape from Mos Eisley. And all the Imperials they had to avoid. Just to get out. And the effort that went into trying to navigate through Mos Eisley with a fucking land speeder the size of a fucking. While at the same time killing some Imperial stormtroopers in the way. But you know, I, I think I'm doing pretty well here. I actually don't know where I'm supposed to go. Or how far I'm... Oh, I won. Just in... Oh, I failed. Ah, oh, fuck. I forgot this fucking mission. It sucks. I'm actually gonna try and do it without slowing down now.
because I just don't want to do this again. This is the most boring mission in the game. And just imagine having to play test this. Just to get the timing right. Fuck. Ugh. I think I might need to get some help when I can, like right here. Oh god, I... why did I take that route? That route was a nightmare, a nightmare. Why did I take it? I hope I am close to escaping. Because I just don't want to do this mission again. I'm hoping I can do this whole, uh, ep the whole episode 4 uh, part of the game. And, uh, well, oh, I, 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 you know what, forget it, I don't want to deal this, with this mission again, so, uh, that's going to be it for today's episode of, uh, Flight of the Falcon, uh, tune in for next episode when I will, uh, skip this mission and try to do the next one. Thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.